Hey everyone, I want to walk through some of the uh, new updates to DaVinci Resolve in version 17 that I think are useful. Uh, first of all, we have an updated inspector over here. It has um, the composite mode moved down. Um, I think they might have added a few more things. The speed change looks kind of new. They kind of spruce things up and they've also put uh, like the audio tab and the file so it's easier to access these things right here in the inspector. We have a new um, metadata mode over here in our, our media pool. So before we had list, we had thumbnails, but now we have this, which gives you a thumbnail with some metadata information. That's nice to see. Uh, this is a small update, but very, very welcome. Um, you can now order your timeline list here. So before, these were only sorted by creation date, but now you can come over here and sort them by alphabetical order and also recently used. That's really nice to have. They spend a lot of time in the cut page, which I never use. In fact, I've actually disabled the, the shortcut to it. So if you spend a lot of time in the cut page, then there's a lot of welcome additions in here you can explore, but I, I don't, I'm used to using the edit page. They also made some nice additions to Fusion. I started using Fusion a bit more now, and one of the frustrating things was uh, you wanna make your Fusion effects time up with your audio, but you couldn't hear the audio in Fusion previously, but now you can. So if you hit play in here, you can hear the audio in your timeline. So you can time up your effects to that audio, which is really nice to have. You can also, I believe, uh, customize this toolbar here. You can make your own toolbar. So if you wanna have, instead of this long list of things, you wanna just have the ones that you use mostly, you can do that. They made some really great updates to the color page. They have this new mode called HDR. It's a whole new set of color wheels. Um, there's actually six available. You can actually edit their breakpoints. So the area of the luminance that they affect, or lumin luminance in chroma, in fact, that they affect, you can actually modify them here. You can also turn off specific ones so that your, your list over here is shorter. And additionally, they've given you um, exposure and saturation sliders for each one. Uh, so these are really welcome additions. You can see the temp temperature and contrast are all here on one page rather than being on um, separate pages like they were previously. Uh, even over here, these used to be, there used to be a one and two number over here you could swap and you'd find the temp temperature on one and the saturation on the other. So now they're all in one place, which is nice to see. They've added this new tool called Color Warper. It's the second icon here. And by default, you get to see this, which looks a lot like the Time and Pixels color remap. It's a plugin you can buy, and it allows you to just grab and shift colors. And you can also click anywhere, and now you're grabbing that color and moving it around. So if I grab this blue, so I can shift the blues just by clicking on that color and dragging it around. So that's really, really powerful. And they also give you a different way of viewing. This sort of separates the lumina and the chroma, I believe. And you can increase the number of points, so you can have very fine control. You can also apply a limit. There we go. So. I guess all these points are locked. It's very powerful. All kinds of stuff you can do with that. Uh, they've updated the scopes over here. You can uh, have, you have more options for your waveform. You can change the different viewing modes here. They've changed the way the uh, open effects looked. So they all have new icons and they dropped in some new ones, including right here, these uh, chroma keyers. So 3D key, alpha mat, luma keyer. They made some updates with these, adding some new features. They're all a lot more powerful too. You can uh, do more with these than you could before. So uh, you don't have to jump into Fusion for doing all of your chroma keying. You can probably do a lot more of that here in your color page. Ones like Motion Trail, this is interesting. I'm not gonna see anything with this video here. So this is a clip without any uh, motion blur or motion trails. And if I back it up and play it with the motion blur, you see how it adds some motion blur to it. It's kind of an interesting effect, kind of like a Wonder Woman kind of effect. They made a number of updates to Fairlight now, I'm not a huge user of Fairlight. I, I use it for simple videos where I have just a couple tracks of audio and maybe some music. But if I get really, really crazy, I will jump into Pro Tools because that's what I'm used to. But if you're a Fairlight user, um, they've changed the engine behind this so it works more efficiently. They've also given you this new tool, which is called the Edit Selection Mode. And what this does is the tool changes depending on what you're, where you're at on the part of that video or part of that audio clip. So if you grab down below, you can drag it around if you go up higher, you can actually drag and select a range. You can still do the audio level. And if you grab the ends, you can trim it. So it's a nice, powerful, all-in-one tool. They made a bunch of changes to the busing, which I've never used. So I couldn't even show you where that's at. Uh, they've also added support for Dolby Atmos, which is pretty crazy. That's more for really professional companies that edit audio. They did make a change where the, the video monitor up here, I, I guess, 
before it would either not update or it wasn't visible. And that was, it's really a missing feature because it's hard to edit your audio if you can't see your video, right? Yeah, seems obvious, but anyway, it's there now. They also made a change to uh, color management. Previously, if you selected uh, color managed, you had a whole list of options here that were rather confusing, especially for newer users. Uh, now they've simplified it. They've given you a, a description of what this setting does. And so uh, this is nice to see a, a simplified system of color managing your, your project. I'm usually on just the default here. And you know, if I'm in Rec. 709, I'll be in Rec. 709 like this. Or if I'm using HDR, I'll be in one of these HDR modes, which looks like they might have changed as well. So this is different than what they had before. I would probably use this one since I'm sticking at 1,000 nits. I'd turn this on at 1,000 nits. And also, this it's nice to have these options right here. I'm going to see if they change the other menu. They have this um, preferences. Usually they had color. Yeah, so they moved the, uh, the HDR um, scopes setting. Out of that, I believe you go in here now and you can choose HDR and there's your knit scale. So it used to be here under user and color. It was at the top and now they've moved it. And also if you click this button here, you can pop your scopes out and they added a new three by three scope mode. So you can actually have more than one waveform or, or histogram or whatever you wanna have. There's one other feature they added. It's a nice addition. Let's say you had a clip of an entirely edited video, so it has all different shots and edits all throughout the thing, and you wanted to split that up into individual clips. For example, if you had an old project and you didn't have all the original files, you just had the final video, then you could select that clip, come up here to Timeline, and hit Detect Scene Cuts. And what that's going to do is detect all the scene cuts in this clip. I think it's nice to have. I know this is something that Premiere Pro has, so it just kind of resolve catching up to Premiere in, in one way. Version 17 has added a bunch of new Fusion titles. You can drag these right into your timeline, but they've also changed the way that the basic text works. So if you're in here, you can see the update to the font. In version 16, if you would hover over these, you wouldn't see it change until you clicked on it. Although they still haven't fixed this bug where if you select a certain font like Montserrat and you make a change to the font size, it changes the font face to extra light every time. It's really annoying. Even if I select medium, it's actually medium until I click it, and now it's extra light. That's dumb. Well, that's um, the features that I found useful, the ones that I would end up using um, mostly. They've, they've added all kinds of features. Unfortunately, they still don't have support for ProRes RAW. I have a whole folder here full of ProRes RAW, and it's just still no preview. You get the audio, but that's it. And it's, it's really unfortunate. It's the only one out of you know the three, the Final Cut, Premiere, and Resolve. It's the only one that doesn't support ProRes RAW. And Resolve supports the other formats so well. If you look in the uh, settings, you can see here they have a list of all the, the RAW formats that they, they do support. And when you're selected on one of these, you, know, you can come in here and set all of your settings according to the project. And, and it's, it's really powerful. So I would love to have ProRes RAW support in uh, Resolve. I'm not really sure why they haven't. They, they have a relationship with Apple already. They license ProRes in their cameras and in, in this software. It would be simple for them to add ProRes RAW support. The only reason I can think is that they just really want to stick it to Atomos because Atomos is the only company that's doing ProRes RAW recording through like the Ninja V and the Neon and a couple of their monitors. It's really the only way you can get ProRes RAW right now. And so I think because of the 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 big, there's a lot of tension and, and you know, distrust, dislike, I guess, between the two companies. That's the only thing I could think of why Blackmagic doesn't support ProRes RAW in any of their products. It seems silly, but that's the only thing I can think of. Otherwise, um, it's a great update. The public beta is available. I'll put the link in the description down below. Um, if you are a studio user, it's a free update, just like it has always been in the past. Also, before you install Resolve 17, make sure you go into Resolve 16 and export your database. Hit this button here. That way, if you want to go back to 16, you can. If you just go into 17 and update your database, it will only work in 17. Of course, the problem with that is, if there's a bug in 17, like there often is, you won't be able to go back to 16 and edit in 16. Those old projects won't open up in 16 anymore. In macOS, if you want to install version 17 without overriding your previous version, just put the version number at the end of it, and then when you install 17, it won't overwrite it and you can give 17 a new name like this is 17.0 beta one. I'm curious if they've fixed this one bug. So if I selected a clip like this and then I decide, well, I don't want that one, but see how this fade is still selected? So I copy it and I come over to a new timeline, I hit paste, and if I click on that fade, boom, hard crash. Every time this happened in version 16 too, 
I guess they can't fix everything. Well, that's all I have for you guys. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.